Hi, I'm Eric Paulus. I'm an associate professor here in electrical engineering computer science at UC Berkeley. I'm also on the faculty of the Berkeley Center for New Media, and I want to show you some of my favorite creative spaces here on the UC Berkeley campus. Follow me. I want to take you to some of the research locations where human-computer interaction research happens. And one of them is right here at the Hybrid Ecologies Lab. Now this is a space that's really near and dear to my heart because this is where my graduate students and I really sit down, dig in, and try to disrupt and invent the future in really creative ways. Um, it's one of the most inspirational places to be because it's also a place where we're trying to generate new ideas and new technologies. Um, but really, I want you to meet the students that are kind of at the heart of that mission. This is Kevin. Uh, Kevin, uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about what you're working on. Sure. Hi, I'm Kevin. I'm a 60-year PhD student working with AIR. My background is in mechanical engineering, and some of my research has been around investigating new workflows for working with digital fabrication tools. Uh, so, some, so in the past, I've done some projects around woodworking joinery, and then also uh, more recently a project around lathes and haptic feedback. Great. Yeah, Kevin uh, really comes with a tremendous amount of kind of mechanical skills blended with a creative spirit of kind of design and innovation. Uh, here's Molly. Molly, could you uh, introduce yourself? Tell us a little about some of the great stuff you've been working on. Yeah, sure. So I'm Molly. I'm a fourth year PhD student uh, and I work on a lot of different projects. So before I joined the lab, I actually worked at Qualcomm in San Diego as, a, um, as an engineer. We work on robotics type things. And before that, I actually worked as a performer on the stage. Uh, we did a lot of puppetry and circus stuff around. Um, and that's something that I'm working on here is kind of bridging those two worlds. So for example, um, we had uh, Stan Lai came and did a presentation here and we worked with their their whole team to present, um, uh, incorporate augmented reality into the theater experience, which was super, super fun. Um, and another project that I'm working on with Sarah um, is that we're interviewing creative practitioners um, around campus. So this was Aaron Tool, who uh, is a ceramicist. And we interviewed him and a few other creative practitioners like uh, uh, clowns and uh, weavers and a bunch of different groups about how they use documentation. And we're kind of looking at how that would inform the design of future tools. Very cool. I think you get a sense of the kind of materials and the kind of uh, way we want to inspire creative thinking and look for how to in, uh, encourage it. Um, let's make a chance that you get to meet a couple more folks. Uh, so this is Catherine, uh, who comes with a really tremendously interesting background, and she's just joined us here and has already hit the ground running. Catherine, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Catherine. I'm a first year graduate student here at Berkeley and in hybrid ecologies. Uh, my background is in electrical engineering and microelectronics and implantable devices. I also worked a couple of years at Apple as a hardware engineer on the iPhone. Um, and now I'm working on, I'd say, even cooler stuff. Um, I've been playing a lot with different kinds of materials. Like this is mycelium, a biological material that I grew. Um, and I'm interested in a lot of digital fabrication tools. This is a 3D printer here. Uh, I'm, I'm particularly interested in the life after an object is made, how it falls apart, how it's destructed, and I'm working on tools to be able to control that. Great, awesome. It's really, it's really inspirational, as I said, to see the different materials and to not take things that are just the kind of next obvious step. The, the students here really try to think out broadly many years in the future. Uh, Christy is here. She's uh, just about to finish and graduate, but has a wealth of great projects that maybe she can share with us. You want to introduce yourself, Christy? Absolutely. Uh, I'm Christy. I'm a six-year graduate student uh, here in the lab. Uh, and my background is in computer science, but most of my research is actually hardware-based. Um, so there's been a lot to learn, and it's been a lot of fun. Um, and my research has been looking at uh, wearable technology, uh, specifically new locations for technology on the body, and new interactions and relationships we can have with technology on the body. Um, so probably my favorite project ever uh, was a collaboration with both Sarah and Molly um, and it looked at hair as an interface. Um, so we put electronics, uh, maybe you can see there's some wires in this braided hair extension. Um, and we added electronics, designed a PCB, and we were able to change the color of these hair extensions, um, change the shape of them, and then use them for uh, capacitive touch sensing as an input. Um, I've also looked at fingernail worn devices um, and designed a couple of PCBs that are designed to be worn on the fingernail, um, just like a false fingernail. Um, and lately I've been exploring uh, the potential for lotions and creams to mediate um, interactions with technology that's worn on the skin. Um, so that is why I have these creepy men. <laughs> Thank you. I love watching Christy work. There's always new kinds of potions and different materials on her table. Um, 
And finally, I want you to meet Sarah here. Sarah uh, also comes with a background in product design and she's done a lot of really interesting work. Sarah, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. So I'm Sarah. I'm a fourth year PhD student. Um, my background is in product design and computer science. And here I've been working on interfaces for creative writing, looking at how you can represent and play with style and literature. And then also more recently on CAD tools for things like natural materials, like branches and stones, uh, to think about how we might interact with that in a more hands-on sort of way. Great. So you'll see it's a mix of a certainly high technology, but also a blend of uh, low tech and the analog and really celebrating this kind of poetry of life with technology. Let's move on. Uh, thank you, everyone. I want to take you into the Citrus Invention Lab. This was one of the very first makerspaces in the whole UC system. And it started in 2012. And it's one of my favorite places to go and be inspired. You come in and students access the lab through a maker pass system. This is like a library card for making, and it lets you access the facilities and the tools and the expertise. Oh, here's Chris Myers. Uh, he's the senior lab manager of the Citrus Invention Lab. Maybe he'll give us a tour. Yes, come on in. Um, <laughs> welcome. This is the Citrus Invention Lab. We are one of the first maker spaces on campus, and I, I think the best. Um, and, uh, we, have a, we have all these digital fabrication and hand tools to, for everyone's needs student, faculty, staff, everyone, we welcome. Uh, this is our 3D printer rack, where you can just come in and grab your filament, load it up and go. We don't even charge for the filament. And speaking of going, here we have our GoFab machines where you, you can actually check out a 3D printer. You can grab it, check it out, and go print wherever you want, safely. Um, further, further on, we have more 3D printers. This is an ABS printer for all your ABS needs. Um, further on back, we have uh, some SL SLA machines, uh, uh, laser-based uh, resin uh, uh, printers. We can do really high resolution and pretty quickly too. So if you need to do a um, uh, uh, superhero chess set, you, you have it made here. Chris, who are, who are these people up here? Those are a bunch of characters. <laughs> uh, no, this is our student staff, our super user staff. And this is a group of students who are highly trained and motivated. They keep this lab going after hours and on weekends. So it's a very, we can offer a lot of uh, different hours uh, and fit the students' uh, need, uh, which is great. Uh, we have our first aid here, which is uh, band-aids for all your needs because we have all these amazing uh, hand tools. So uh, you, uh, you can actually grab something off the printer or laser cutter and then continue uh, modifying it to, to uh, work. Come on back here. We have some great, uh, great area to get messy. Uh, we have a um, uh, vinyl cutter here for all your laptop sticker needs. This is very popular. It's very busy in the beginning of the semester usually. Uh, back here we have a casting area for um, silicone molds and soft tooling. Uh, you know, casting and um, other flexible materials or urethanes with vacuum tanks, uh, pressure vessels um, to get very high quality cast of parts from. We have a vacuum form, a pretty nice automatic vacuum form machine, pretty automated uh, for a lot of um, thermal forming and things uh, of that nature. Over here we have our laser cutter stations. We have two uh, pretty good uh, laser cutters. They get a lot of use and uh, uh, fulfill a lot of uh, needs. We have um, Back here we have uh, circuit board mills. We have LPKF, which is you know basically industry standard type of uh, double layered boards, uh, and uh, we have a other mill for uh, simpler things. And uh, we like to think that you can come in here and breadboard, and then CAD up your design and and uh, mill out your circuits and walk away uh, with a completed. Oh look here! Here's a student mm -hmm. returning a. Uh, go fat printer. Hey, student. So, hey, printer. Um, we have a reflow oven and microscopes. So you can do SMD work. Uh, uh, some really nice soldering stations uh, uh, where you can actually uh, you know, solder everything together. Scopes, power supplies, all this electronic equipment. Um, uh, this is a, a pretty well outfitted um, uh, electrical bench area. Um, moving on. We have um, a lot of cool projects going on. This is a really neat little um, robot that um, uses camera, AI, 
It's going to be uh, for a um, uh, art and technology project for a museum exhibition. This is just a scale prototype to prototype the electronics and the pro uh, programming. And the real one's going to be giant and, um, and uh, yeah, really cool. We have a whiteboard, projector, everything. We do uh, classes in here, a lot of workshops in here, a lot of um, school groups, uh, teams uh, meet in here, like FemTech, uh, Girls in Engineering, Enable Tech. Um, the Rocket Club, um, and the, a lot of different groups, engineering groups and non-engineering groups come in here and use our space. This has been great. I love visiting the Invention Lab. It's one of my favorite places on campus. Uh, it's full of uh, not only exciting materials and tools, but people. Uh, Chris himself is a little modest. He comes from a background in Art Center College of Design. He also did a lot with toy design. He teaches uh, many of the design innovation courses. Um, I always come in here to be inspired by what's just happening. I say, come for the laser cutter, stay for the community. It's a really great place to uh, really sit yourself down and get your hands dirty and really explore some really cool materials. I know it's going to pick up and get really busy in here, uh, so we're going to move on. I think I'll take one of these GoFabs to go um, on my own adventure. So thanks, Chris. Thanks for stopping by. I want to show you another place where research happens, and that's the Berkeley Institute of Design. In here is another one of the creative spaces where researchers come together with other disciplines and a community around human-computer interaction. It's always great to be in this space, <laughs> looking what time it is. This is just setting the tone of the creativity. All these sort of individual numbers are made by students. Um, as you can see, there's uh, not only the space is a studio style, but it's where people come together. We have a lecture series where human-computer interaction researchers come here. Uh, we also have lots of events, workshops, breakout areas. One of the things is there's a lot of uh, graduate student space. Uh, this is Eldon. Eldon is one of the graduate students here. Um, Eldon, you tell us a little bit about the space here. Yeah, so we're in the big lab. Uh, this is probably my favorite place on campus, honestly. Um, it's pretty interdisciplinary, uh, so I work here as well as many other students and geeks in CS education to HCI to machine learning, all the way to mechanical engineers who work on space robots, like seriously robots in space that are in space now, um, to design stuff. So it's, it's a pretty exciting place. As you can see, the cubes are kind of decorated, there are plants hanging from the ceiling. Uh, we're inside, a, I think, a historical building right now. Um, so it's, it's an exciting place to be. I love that. I love being in here too. I, I have the same feeling. Um, could you share something you're working on with us? Yeah, sure. You wanna see yeah, that? sure. Okay, let's yeah. go ahead and do that. So another thing about BID is it brings together, as Elder was saying, people from many different disciplines. Of course, you know, electrical engineering, computer science, mechanical engineering, art practice, uh, the information school, data science, education. You see here a number of the faculty that represent the kind of participation and collaborative spirit here, as well as some of the students. And it's a great place for the entire kind of HCI research community comes together every week for meetings and also intermittently throughout uh, the week. Um, so great, we're gonna join Eldon and see what he's up to. Um, so Eldon, tell us a little bit about yourself maybe and uh, what you're working on, where you're, where you're headed now. Yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm Eldon. I'm a fourth year PhD student working with Bjorn Hartman. Uh, so a while ago, I was working on digital fabrication and AR. I did this project for, uh, for cyclists to help detect vehicles outside a cyclist's field of view. I think the project's up there somewhere with the bike helmet and the camera on top. And uh, right now, I started getting interested in uh, the machine learning aspect of that project. And so I'm working on developer tools to help people learn machine learning. I saw you playing around with some hand tools. What was that project yeah, about? so way, way back when, um, when I was doing digital fabrication, I did this project called Drill Sergeant, which was this, what we called an ecosystem of, uh, of power tools that had these sensors and a little bit of intelligence built in where you could load in an assembly. And for each step, our system would kind of delegate some instructions to every tool we had. And that tool would coach the user through completing that step, whether it's like chopping a piece of wood or drilling a hole, 
fastening a screw, joining things together. Um, and these right here, I just found the original prototypes of the system. Ah, those are precious. You'll have to keep those. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love this idea of really having uh, the tools kind of participate in helping you be creative and kind of empower you to go beyond and scaffold into new abilities and, and skill sets. So. I'm just a fan of that project. So thanks, I'm glad you still have it in one piece. It's yeah, a great absolutely. piece. Thank you, Eldon. Thanks, um, let's take a little look around. So um, there's a lot of different spaces for researchers to uh, work. Uh, again, as a sort of studio style, of course, there's a lot of play. The competitive foosball cannot be ignored. Um, this is Bala. Bala's another PhD student here. Um, maybe tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're working on. Hi, hey, yeah, I'm Bala. I'm a fourth year PhD student working with Beyond. So, um, so I, I used to work on uh, mechanical engineering. My background comes from mechanical engineering. But then after coming to Berkeley, I was exploring my interests um, to a greater extent. And uh, I saw there's a lot of intersections uh, with my prior experience, both in uh, mechanical engineering and electronics, and uh, as well as in computer science and design. So I started working with uh, Beyond originally on uh, robotics, and then eventually moved on to find my interest in augmented reality and virtual reality. So currently I'm working on uh, productivity and um, collaboration tools for AR and VR. So my recent um, project was uh, about first thing to teach uh, VR, how do you teach VR design to a uh, regular audience through 2D videos. So that was a project that um, we had wrapped up about a year, ba year back and presented at Kai. And then we went on to virtual reality telepresence. How do you use VR and uh, AR telepresence to actually teach physical tasks? Uh, so now I'm working on some cool project like uh, so we are trying to uh, so we have all these physical artifacts and physical toys but we are trying to see if we can actually blend um, like these physical toys with virtual characters like for example say this is an owl right and a virtual dog comes nearby then can we can you know can you actually make the owl size roll around and how do you alter such uh, behaviors and experiences so that's something that we are currently trying out but in general, yeah, working on a lot of uh, cool projects at BIT, like I think this is a really uh, nice space for creative ideas to flourish. And you have people around you who, whom you can bounce ideas off and who are quite encouraging of these. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I always find that when I come over here, there's so many interesting folks. Um, we're going to leave a thank you for yeah. the time, and I can't wait to see where this project goes. I love the fact that there's this blend of kind of the digital with the augmented reality, but also this very playful spirit and the real and the physical. I think that sort of showcases the talent that really um, and the interdisciplinary span of, of, of people in this space. Um, like I said, this is a very happy home for a broad community of human computer interaction research to take place. Um, we're going to move on. Thanks, everyone. I want to take you into Jacobs Hall. And this is one of the newest kind of maker spaces and educational buildings on campus. It's a place for prototyping, inventing, innovation, all kinds of things. I think we'll get the idea if we walk through. The building was designed to bring together sort of art and innovation. So these ideas of the sort of um, engineering and the humanities, and it's, you'll see that spirit throughout the building. One of the things is, is this has one of the most active maker spaces on campus. Um, and it is a 24,000 square foot building. Uh, students can come in and they access the space through a maker pass system, which is very much like a library card for making and allows students to come in and start using these facilities. Uh, one of the things you'll see is a lot of interesting tools and materials, but I really get excited about the people here. Uh, this is Joey Gobroth. He is the technical lab director here. Um, maybe he's the best person to tell us uh, about the space, a little bit about himself. Joey? Yeah, glad to. Really excited about the tour and the MDES program. Um, so you're in the first floor of Makerspace, which is the biggest makerspace in the building. And uh, this is kind of our catch-all. Not only is it a great place to come and meet with your teammates around a table uh, or to do your big project layups, but uh, we have some exciting technologies in here too. There's two main things that folks are interested in when they're coming here to make, um, and that is 
consumer 3D printing and laser cutting. Um, so let's take a look at consumer 3D printing. We do have more high-end equipment upstairs, but the idea with this fleet of Ultimakers was that we wanted to increase the amount of throughput uh, as much as possible to get as much people on machines and printing as we could. And so to that end, we only allow PLA to kind of streamline the material choices. Uh, we have a queuing system that um, allows users to up upload their file, and then uh, when their part is done, it's over on the done tray. Um, and so that's a really great way to just get as many parts made as possible. But we also have type A 3D printers and Ultimaker, uh, Lulz bots, um, and those are kind of more experimental machines. They're intended for people to come in with experimental filaments that they might want to try out or processes that don't go well on the more broad machines like the Ultimaker fleet. Um, and so the more uh, functionality in this room around, um, we have a soft goods area so people can do all sorts of uh, sewing, whether that be on our industrial machines or on our consumer grade singers. We have a vacuum former for making really exciting parts. Um, if you just have an object like a tape measure, uh, you can easily make a mold of that object on this machine. We have a really great workshop that deals with uh, people 3D printing an object and then doing this and then using that form to make uh, custom chocolates. Um, so a really fun application and just really exciting ways to, to get from 2D to 3D as quick as possible. Um, some other processes are our vinyl cutter, um, which handles uh, heat press material too. So we can do one-off t-shirts or hoodies, things like that. So it's a really great attraction for teams that want to come in and do that kind of thing. And then we can kind of fool them into making 3D design. <laughs> um, so some basic electronics, hand tools too, like soldering irons and uh, thin gauge wire are available in this general makerspace, although we have a, a more high-end electronics upstairs for diagnostic tools, micro-soldering, uh, desoldering, those kind of things. Um, but the, the basics take care of a lot of it. So if you're just using uh, microprocessors or uh, small electronics, you can get a lot of that done here. Um, we'll also see on the other side that we have a really a, a great store, virtual store that allows users to make purchases of microcontrollers or Arduinos or motors. Um, or things like plywood for the lasers, and uh, they can actually pick that material up from us, and then we bill them at the end of the semester in one big bill. So we try to cut the corners for the students as much as possible and make it so that they can do what they need to do here and not have to leave campus if they don't have to. Great. Um, so all sorts of 3D printers, hand tools, uh, are accessible and not stored away in drawers where people can't see them or know what they are. Um, and so that's all here too. We have a couple of design kiosks in the space that are loaded up with the software that our, our users are using in the space. Um, so if they don't have it on their laptop or they don't have their laptop with them, they can design uh, on the design kiosk and easily offload to the machines in the space. Um, and so getting into our 3D printer, uh, sorry, our laser cutter suites, we have three of them in there. Um, material available as scrap for free or in our store as I mentioned. Getting into the dirtier sides of the first floor makerspace, uh, we have our larger laser cutter at two by four, and that's great for metal, I'm sorry, that's great for wood or plastic. Um, and we're starting to get into our CNC equipment too. So we have a full scale shop bot up here, so it can handle four by eight sheet goods. Uh, we sell sheet goods to the users too. Uh, it's also been used a lot for foam cutting to do um, pattern layup, or if you're doing layup of carbon fiber, you can cut your forms on this. Uh, so we'll see a lot of uh, teams and clubs come in to use it for those kind of things. CAD CAM is really big here, and things like the ShopBot are an intro into that. Another one is the other mills, which are circuit board uh, CNC machines, and those are kind of the, the, the onboarding to CNC that you'll see more of downstairs. Um, and so in this messy side over here, we also have uh, a woodworking suite, so table saw, band saw, uh, sanders, drill press, things like that for breaking down material or doing some quick mock-ups. Uh, it's really handy to have that stuff accessible up here. Um, and we also have some injection molding technology and uh, our uh, actual practical store is here. So if you're just picking up materials, one of the coolest pieces of technology that we're really excited about getting in this last year has been the metal laser cutter. Um, and so this is a really fantastic uh, graduation from our normal universal lasers where students are learning how to go from Illustrator a very simple Illustrator or a DXF out of Auto, uh, Fusion 360 onto those lasers. That same process you can use to create uh, things not out of plywood or acrylic, but metal. And that allows for steel, mild steel, stainless steel, uh, and copper, and aluminum, can, a thin gauge, can all be very easily cut on this machine. And that introduces some of those properties. Um, this machine actually even has a trunnion on it. And a trunnion is a, uh, is a way to actually hold the material and turn it so that not only can it do sheet goods that you would normally see, 
uh, but it can also do tube stock. So all this is, although this is kind of an architectural approach to that technology, you could very easily imagine taking two pieces of round tube and coping them on this machine in such a way that they fit together at an angle, which is usually a very technical, hard process to do. And here it can be done simply by going through a SolidWorks plugin. So we're really excited about introducing those same easy access technologies to materials like metal, which have durability and bendability um, and things that uh, could be more difficult to obtain or to take more hand touch to do. Um, we've given students access to those things here. And how do students get access to these materials? Like how do you actually locate them or is that something that's readily available? It, there should be readily available. We've kind of tried to do the lowest hanging fruit and put it on a Shopify store that we have. As soon as you get your maker pass, you'll get invited to that store uh, and you can browse those items there. Once you make a purchase on that store, that e-store, uh, you simply just go to one of our staff uh, they will look up your purchase and hand you the materials and you'll be billed at the end of the semester. So we try to make it as easy as possible. Ah, I love it. Okay, that was really inspirational. I can't wait to sort of spend more time down here. Thank you, great. Joey. That was a great uh, sort of tour of just all the great things you can get in involved with here. Um, so we're going to move on. Thank okay. you. Um, so as you saw, there's just an amazing suite of tools uh, and technologies. The, the idea is that this works very much like a menu. So you come in, as Joey was mentioning, maybe you start off working with hand tools or laser cutters or 3D printers. And as you move on, you take uh, sort of simple online courses, get some training, and then you're able to use the whole suite of different facilities here at Jacobs Hall. The next place we're gonna move into is the, some of the studio uh, for instruction. So these are design studios where courses are held. So, these are rooms that allow for sort of flexible teaching, different kinds of layout. Um, they're a place to actually get dirty, work with different materials. Inside of each classroom, there are cabinets filled with prototyping material, things to help with electronics. Um, and mainly, the space is where you can be creative. The courses that are taught in here, we have about two dozen courses per semester. Um, we'll go over the next one here. And the classes that are held in here are around two dozen courses, as I said. Uh, they span a range of engineering disciplines as well as uh, theater dance performance studies, art practice, uh, center for new media. We also have more advanced electronic prototyping, as Joey mentioned, uh, where you can actually do a little bit more work in terms of uh, smaller components and debugging. So there's a little bit more higher end digital uh, debugging and test circuitry available. We're gonna head up to the third floor. As I mentioned, there are uh, also a lot of activity at night in the building. So not just the courses, but we also host a number of student clubs um, and also what we call DECALs. This is a democratic education at Cal. These are courses run by students and they span a lot of different technical um, sort of skill sets that you might want to pick up. And so if you're here at night, the whole building takes on a different vibe. We're sort of sneaking in before the energy picks up today. This is the third floor. This obviously affords very large gatherings. So in here we can host larger courses, uh, breakout events, workshops. We also host um, several speaker series uh, currently uh, uh, design Conversations and Design Pioneers are two of them. We also have a Field Notes uh, series where we bring in experts from the outside to inspire and learn from. So we're gonna head into the advanced prototyping. So as you saw downstairs, there's lots of 3D printing available, but sometimes you wanna work with different materials you want to do things that actually involve uh, microfluidics or you need to work with nylon. Um, and this is where you need to go. And this is really where a much more advanced prototyping facility is available. Um, there's always the kind of most cutting edge different technologies here. Uh, this is uh, Chris Barcel. He's one of the design specialists here. Uh, Chris, maybe tell us a little about the facilities here. Sure, yeah, this is the advanced prototyping lab. And uh, we've got a variety of different kind of 3D printers, uh, plastic printers primarily. Uh, kind that uh, print similar but a little bit stronger materials uh, than downstairs. Filament printers that print ABS or polycarbonate. Um, we also recently just uh, got a printer that'll print nylon with carbon fiber, solid strand carbon fiber in it. Um, some samples of that around here somewhere. But 
um, multi-material printing that'll print uh, uh, different colored materials, not necessarily and this is always the strongest material, but good representational models. Um, and SLA printing with the Form 3 that could print, you know, some strong and high resolution single material prints. So you can print uh, enclosures, uh, some mechanical parts, microfluidics have seen, seen some success with a high resolution on that. Uh, yeah, and that's uh, kind of generally what's going on in here. So great. And also, it's not just obviously, again, the facilities, but people like Chris and others that have the design expertise to really uh, talk you through and walk you through. Some of these are a little bit more exotic machines. They require a little bit of extra prep for some of your files. Um, but people are here to kind of guide you and help you through that process. And mainly, you also take those designs that maybe you did in cardboard, maybe you did them in, you know, PLA, and now you're able to actually build them with some structural integrity or some specific mechanical property. So we're going to head all the way down now to the basement. Um, again, I'll tell you a little bit more about the building. Uh, as I said, it is uh, open and it's also not just the design specialist, but there's also a suite of student supervisors that provide access um, outside of the main hours so that people can come in. Uh, they have their own skill set that they lend to the program. And there's a way to actually uh, participate in that particular um, program. As I said, the kinds of classes that are taught here span many different disciplines, and you'll find classmates from, of course, places like engineering, uh, electrical engineering, computer science, mechanical engineering, but you're also gonna find students from English and rhetoric, uh, architecture, theater, dance, performance studies, um, and so on. There's, it's really a, a wealth of creativity, and the barrier to kind of starting to think and make through physical designs is really amazing. We're gonna walk over to the metal shop, you saw a little bit from the fab light of working with metal, but there's actually a full shop that's available here at Jacobs Hall to work with metal. So uh, again, the same system, as you gain your skills, you'll kind of learn more and you'll suddenly be able to actually work with kind of metals and other materials. Again, here's Gary, one of our design specialists, uh, who, um, why don't you show us around the shop and tell us a little bit about yourself, Gary. Sure, I'm Gary, one of the design specialists, as Eric just said. But I've been building BattleBots for years, and so I've learned a lot about working with metal. So you can do that here in our metal shop. Uh, probably the most popular tool we have is our water jet cutter. Because you can cut pretty much anything in this machine. So you can cut any kind of metal, um, harder materials like ceramics, brittle materials like uh, glass. You can also cut plastic in it. Unfortunately, you can only cut two-dimensional shapes. If you want to cut something in 3D, you'll have to use uh, our Tormox 3-axis CNC milling machine. Once you get comfortable with that, you can move on up to this monster over here, which is our Haas Mini Mill, also a 3-axis um, CNC milling machine. And then uh, we've got a bunch of classic metal working tools, uh, band saws, drill press, hydraulic press, belt sander. Um, yeah, so once you're done cutting all your parts apart, <laughs> or making your parts, you may want to attach them to one another. And for that, we have our Lincoln Electric TIG welder back here. So with the TIG welder, you can weld your parts together. Um, TIG welding is very uh, technique intensive. So if you want to learn how to TIG weld, prepare to spend a lot of time practicing. But um, once you're good at it, it's a great way to attach your metal parts back together. Great, thanks Gary. I, I'm always inspired by wandering through the building and finding uh, all the different materials that you can sort of get your hands dirty with. But also, again, this idea that you don't have to take it all in at one time. You can start to learn and start to add on to your skill set and your design expertise as you kind of move forward. Now, one of the things that we're also interested in is thinking about the kinds of tools that might be in the future of these kinds of maker spaces. And we've been thinking a little bit about how to outfit not just 3D printers and laser cutters, but other kinds of technologies. Um, so we're gonna take a look at one of those that we're starting to prototype now, and that is actually using robots. We're thinking about how robots can be part of the making process, and they can also be another creative tool. I would think of it like a creative material you could work with. 
And here's Lucy and Ethel, and of course here's Cody, another hey. one of our design specialists. How's it going? Great. Why don't you tell us a little about uh, yourself and what we're looking at? Uh, yeah, so my name is Cody Glenn. I'm a design specialist here at the Jacobs Institute. Um, today we're looking at some uh, robots here. These are uh, Lucy and Ethel. Uh, they are two KUKA Agilis robots. Uh, they are insanely fast. They are extremely precise. Um, they can go one meter per second and have uh, repeatability down to 0.01 millimeters, which is insane. And the cool thing about these things is that they become whatever tool you put on it. So, for example, if you put a 3D print head on it, then it becomes a 3D printer. If you put a pen in it like it is now, um, now it becomes a multi-axis drawing tool. So, uh, really, really cool tools, very exciting um, to have here at the Jacobs Institute. So. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Cody. There's just too many sort of fun things to get into the sandbox and play with here. Yeah. I can't wait to see what happens with uh, these robots. I like the naming too. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So you've got a sense of the building and the habitants, the kinds of space. Um, we're going to head on out, but I do want to uh, let you know that this is the kind of place that's always evolving. And when you come here, you're going to find new kinds of technologies. Um, you're also going to find lots of different uh, people intersecting the building. I already mentioned about the interdisciplinarity, but there's also um, a chance to have interactions across campus with um, making and prototyping. And some of the design from this building actually manifest them themselves in other parts of campus. You'll get a chance to see that, hopefully. Um, I encourage you to spend time in the building. Um, it's a place that many people just stop by. I say, come for the laser cutter, but stay for the community. And that's what I see. A lot of people just come here to do something, then they get inspired to do more um, and be friends and whole communities um, evolve. All right. Au revoir, Jacobs Hall. We're going to head out to our next adventure.